Hello everyone and welcome back to the Quake Pro League as we are heading into our third match between Nosfa and Dewey. And I think between these two players, Flea, it's a, hmm, best way to put this, clash of stars really. We've got Dewey who we can be quite defensive and can force out a lot of rotations. Where Nosfa, an absolute, very aggressive aim star like the Latin region always is. Absolutely. I still remember when Dewey first entered the Quake Pro League, it was like a bomb had gone off for a lot of players because he was so different from any other playstyle that all of the competitors were used to. He can just absolutely complete a game with a one frag lead and he sees absolutely no issues with that. A 1-0, it's as much of a win as a 20-0 and he is absolutely fine taking it if he feels comfortable with that kind of a situation. And on the other hand, Nosfa, I mean, Nosfa is the man with the most stage personality out of any Quake Pro player. You saw that <laughs> so well at the lands, in particular on QuakeCon. He just walks on the stage like he owns the place. He's got that flair, the attitude, such a confident player. And as you mentioned, that really reflects in his aim as well. So clearly a very obvious clash of styles. He's literally like just oozing of confidence. When you see players like that, that's when you know they've got a good aim. I always feel like confidence affects your aim in many ways. Like if you're coming in really hot thinking like, yeah, like I can do this, no problem. I'm better than anyone. Your aim normally complements it further. But if you don't and you're a little bit shaky or worried about a certain matchup, your accuracy can drop. But you know, the first person we are going to be focused on is Dewey and we know what he's like. He likes to play very slow, very methodical. He very rare he forces out the first engagement unless he's got like a huge stack in line or has done enough chip damage to push on through. But this is why I'm very excited. I love matchups where the play styles of both players are just completely different in comparison for everyone else's. I don't mind, you know, like two slow players or two fast players, you know, of course, with the engagements they actually take. But this one should be a spectacle. I mean, curious to see how Nosfer can at least break through and get those dents in the armor. Absolutely, and we've seen them play a few times in the past. The last time they went up against each other, it was actually Dewey to get a 3-0 win over Nosa. So as you said, finding out how to put the cracks in that armor of such a defensive player is absolutely a difficult thing to do. Now, Dewey so far in Stage 4 hasn't had the best track record yet, but of course he's had to play some of the best players on the NA side as well. And he actually did manage to beat the Hang, who is widely considered to be the number two player in the Americas. Meanwhile, Nosfa, a lot of people were expecting great things from him at the previous LAN, didn't quite deliver. I think he was pretty disappointed with it himself. But now in Stage 4, he's actually been doing quite well, netting himself a fair few wins. So uh, this should be a very interesting matchup. It's only up and up. I think I said it back in Week 3 where with Nosfa, he's not as predictable as he used to be. With him, even though he's one of the fastest players to play against in the Americas region, you can always get a rough idea or maybe use your instinct in terms of how and when and where he's going to be at certain occasions. Like, you know, there's a lot of timings which you normally take around the routes on certain maps, but I think he was quite predictable in terms of where he was going to go and what his plan was going to be next. But compared to, like, maybe stage three to, like, when I last saw him back in stage four, week three, he is a different person, still the same style, but it's decided to become a little bit different in terms of how he wants to try and approach certain engagements and fights. But as you can see, the picks and bans have come in. The Corrupted Keep and Ruins have been taken away. We just like we'll be playing on Awoken first, Blood Run second, and we will be seeing Blood Covenant again as the third and final map. What's your take on this, Flea? Interesting picks for these maps. The first one, very meta, very standard Awoken. We're going to see the Doom Slayer, a really powerful pick, perhaps even the most powerful on Awoken because that double jump is so powerful around that center area of the map. So many little shortcuts and mobility movement that you can get out of that ability. But of course, Ranger with the orb, a few nice places that you can orb right on through, such as the teleporter and the hole in the wall next to the heavy. So uh, we've basically got mobility on both sides. Then on Blood Run, that should be a blood bloody brawl to be sure. Two heavy champions, always a joy to see. We're expecting a lot of damage dealt from both players. We've got on the one hand Nosfa running the scale, so he's got a bit more movement speed. He's got the bull rush to work with, but on the other hand Dewey, he has the pineapples, the grenades that he can fire off and cause a lot of damage. Perfect for these close winding corridors that we have on Blood Run. And then the final map, Blood Covenant, much larger, much more open spaces, and we're seeing Slash come out from Nosfa. Great chance 
champion a lot of speed, very useful ability to crouch slide on a map like this. Whereas Dewey, more reactive, more passive, and going more for the damage output by working the BJ this time around. That's a very good insight there, Fleet, because there's a few I was going to add as well. It's the fact that have you seen Dewey's champion picks, you've got the Ranger to try and get himself out of some certain situations with the Orb, and you've got the, uh, I think there was the kill as well on the Blood Run, where he's got the defensive grenades if he puts himself in a bad spot, or if he's got the lead and trying to keep him at bay. And I think we saw the Slash as well on the third and final map. It's just, I think he's got some plans here. I think like Nosfer knows that he's going to have to really really play this out well i think it's the slash it was on blood on the slash was i can't remember from the top of my head uh, but it's on blood covenant oh it's on blood covenant so he's obviously looking to make sure that if in any way shape or form dewey does get that first frag on the board or get the lead throughout the second half at least that way he can keep on his toes and at least try and catch him up when necessary as we will go to the third match of the day the first map as we'll be focusing on dewey to start off with and as you can see there's already got the top mid control has a decent stack and is waiting to see exactly what Nosfo could be up to and what tricks he's going to pull out here. Here we're getting himself some of the weapons that he needs for around 20 seconds right there. All he had was the starting shotgun. No rockets, no LG. Does now manage to get a hold of them, but is still starving for the railgun. And Nosfam knows this, of course. He knows that his opponent doesn't really have anything to do consistent long-range damage with, and so he can take these sorts of engagements as we just saw easily. Dewey, of course, taking perfect advantage of the fact that Ranger has a passive ability that makes him take less self-damage from rocket jumps, and that allows him to just jump right on up and get the railgun at long last. Dewey now. Shotgun comes out, the rocket doesn't connect, but it's kept him at bay for now as Nosfer does have that top mid control, decides to teleport through, gets the rockets, he's only on 10 HP now. Surely Nosfer's going to try and chase this down, the orb just barely didn't come through. But Nosfer is laughing at this moment in time, he's got the heavy, got a great stack. I was going to say he caught him off guard a little bit, but Dewey has done a big chunk of damage to him as well as picking up that mega not too long ago. <laughs> a couple of missed rails though for rockets come out of a, the telly, yeah, but yeah a it's a bit of a weird one a bit of a stare down both players just uh looking at one another i think that noso had an opportunity to secure both mega and heavy but by choosing to prioritize the armor right there which isn't necessarily a bad choice but he did allow dewey to get himself onto that mega health very easily and there's next to no time between the two items dewey hyper aggressive the orb Notes what completely caught by surprise. Me completely caught by surprise as well. Hardly knew what to say <laughs> right there. Notes are just looking back and forth as Dewey Orb straight on through him to not only secure both weapons, but also a frag as well. That was a beautiful play. It wasn't even then like the unexpected movement he made to approach Nosfa. It was also like his LG he was doing so much damage with it considering the range he was at. But now Dewey has top mid once again on that default stack he's just backing himself up with the rockets got the mega for the time being and Nosfer is just waiting to see if he can force out that first engagement has the high net bandage though so he can probably try and do something here and be a bit of a nuisance to Dewey but instead Dewey played that very well managed to back off got top mid again back to his default stack but it's, it's such a nuisance. I think we can say it as well, Flea, where trying to push someone off top mid, especially when you've got similar stack, it's a real nuisance. It's very, very annoying. But there is some way out here, as Dewey does pick up the Mega, and is going to try and contest for the Heavy once again. And we can really see Dewey just make up or rather reinforce why he's such a well-known Ranger player, right? The saying Dewey Orb has been around since ages. And Dewey clearly showing that he's got mad skills on this champion, using not just the orb in a purely offensive that way to do the damage, but just completely throwing off your opponent, playing these mind games and using it brilliantly for positioning. Both players still tied right now. It's a one-to-one -one game. Heavy will be the first major item to spawn. Good play from Dewey. Perfect read on his opponent. Could have just made his way over to the armor instantly, but instead just waited around, stuck his ground, and just did a little bit of damage, getting a perfect read on Nosfa. Dewey now. Oof. Trying to get a cheeky rail off there. Just barely missed, but needs to be careful with this next engagement. Nosfa still showing such pure aggression, considering they're both on the same stack. But not anymore, as he's going to be right behind Nosfer. The rockets come through. Three beautiful rockets to his name. And the second frag for Dewey. 
doing. Stuck in the corner, he's gonna rocket jump right out. You know, so I wasn't gonna pressure him anyways, it seemed. Setting up for Mega, but he is so early, that's still 10 seconds before the item spawns. Nosefa, are you sure you want to stick around here? You don't even have the railgun. He knows it's gonna be spawning anytime right now. Dewey misses the shot. Lands that one though, that is painful for Nosefa. Almost getting away with a major item uncontested would have been beautiful. But he does take a bit of rail damage right at the very end there. Now Dewey still one frag in the lead. We were already seeing that clash of styles that you were talking about earlier, Harry. Dewey playing a very controlled, disciplined, passive game, just letting his opponent make the move and then punish with rail. And it's working out nicely for him. Even though he only has a one frag lead, he doesn't seem too concerned with being forced to chase and try and extend it unless he really feels comfortable doing so. Discipline and control is definitely the two words that comes to mind when you think of Dewey. It's not just playing defensive, he's just choosing the right moments at the right time. Of course, it is defensive to a certain degree, and that's how most people will see it. But it's the discipline, knowing when, when and why and how to take some of these fights. But Dewey so far just doing a chip of damage, pulling away, chip of damage, pulling away. But he does have that time to control again. He's trying to keep away from Nosfer. The first rail comes in. Sequan misses, but will he be able to get a third one? No, he doesn't. And Nosfer surely is going to be on the chase here. He's so tempted and waited at that teddy for such a long time. But Dewey now is back on top. Still got that 2-1 lead with 4 minutes and 15 left remaining. That was also just a beautiful chase from Nosa right there. Juking his opponent out, pretending like he would just go around the corner towards rail, and then just dropping barely out of Dewey's sight. So the Dewey was still caught out of the railgun in his hands. He misses the shot, and then you've got to wait almost a full second before you can fire again. And in that time, Nose had already closed the gap, bridged the distance with LG out. So Dewey had to escape, barely making it out alive. This is such an aggressive play. The shotgun into the orb. And Nosa might actually fall right here. He's got to be so careful. Nice little rail there, though. Who will be the first one to make a move on Heavy? It's been up for quite some time right now. Around 10 seconds. Nui. Wisely realizing he just doesn't have the stack to go for that item. But in doing so, though, he does give up full control to his opponents. He's been screaming quite a lot over the last 30 seconds. Nosfa knows exactly how weak he is. But Dewey's just doing such a good job getting away, choosing the correct paths, the moves. Nosfer's just getting thrown off a little bit here. The aggression's there, but he really is struggling to pincer Dewey. He's just been a real nuisance, just going back and forth, hiding in different places. Even some of the common routes he's taken. I think Nosfer doesn't expect him to be taking these seven paths, but the rocket comes through, and so does the rail, but only one more necessary. He's back on 70 HP. The, the chase comes in. He's on 5 HP now, and then the, the follow-up <laughs> rail back from Dewey. Oh. That, that is a costly misplay from Nosa. He just walked on pi past by the Mega. If he had picked up Mega, he would have been able to just push that fight and take the frag easily. No doubt about it. But because he just walked past the item, didn't quite pick it up, he was forced to retreat and didn't feel confident in the stack he had to close that one out. So uh, hopefully for him, that mistake won't curse him too much. Indeed, it doesn't as he finally chases down Dewey and dies things right back up 2-2. Two to two. That could have gone wrong for the Brazilian player. We definitely expected some of these maps to be low frag games. Two minutes left, left though. Both these players are tied up. And Nosfer finally, after such a long time, manages to equalize the scoreline. But Nosfer just, unlike him, playing very passive, just trying to find out exactly where Dewey could be. As the Mega is up, Delays it only for a couple of seconds, but wants to see if Dewey tried to make a move for it. So right now he's just going to sit on top rail. He knows the heavy is coming up in the next five seconds. And I feel like Dewey's not really too sure what should be his next motive. Maybe he's thinking about just trying to do some chip damage and then decide on what to do afterwards. But the first rail comes in. So does the second. And Nosfa is now literally bolting in to see if he can at least get the correct rotation going. He goes underneath to see if he can find him. Realised that he was top mid after all that time. The third rail in a row. He's going to go for the fourth. He's got the shotgun out. And Dewey's finally taken down. Nosfer takes the lead. And Dewey has one minute left to try and at least equalise things. But it could be a little bit sooner than I expected. 54 HP. The light and the health orb will help Nosfer for now. 
But how long has Nosfer his? The audio cue goes back through, and I think the chase is soon going to be on. And that last frag had so much to do with the weapon availability. Dewey did not have railgun that entire life, and that is what allowed Nosfer to bully him from that range without taking any damage in return. Dewey just didn't have the weaponry to deal with his opponent from that range, and now the LG punishes him tremendously as he cannot get a good rail shot off. Here we go, the rockets are tremendous! And down goes Nosfa. Such beautiful shots out of a horrible position for Dewey. How in the world did he manage to pull that off? The time things right back up with around 20 seconds left. My goodness. Not far from wrong as Friel now will be going to sudden death. Nosfa though is very weak at this time. And now we will head into it. But how long for? Will it be for a long time or a very short time? As as soon as Dewey knows exactly where Nosfa could be, this could be the end of it as he is still available. Nosfa, his game sense is remarkable. He's got a feeling that he could be looking out for him here. And it's just throwing Dewey off a little bit. Dewey just trying to make him feel that like he's not actually there anymore, but he's still going to look around. But he can't actually find him. He's in the perfect spot. He didn't even realize. He's let Dewey take all the items and the map control, but at the same time, he's not letting him get the frag. And finally, uncharacteristic of Nosfa, finally moves around, almost back to his default stack, but needs to be extremely careful where he wants to go. And now it's up to Nosfa to play the kind of game that we usually see come out of Dewey. The evasive, passive, disciplined playstyle as he stacks himself back up. Heavy is up, Dewey is the one who's defending it nicely though. There's no way for Nosfa to make a move on Heavy and love this play from Dewey. Look at this! Perfectly done! Too bad for him, the second rocket didn't connect. But that was beautiful from Dewey, knowing that his opponent expects him to go for the Heavy armor and he says he's comfortable just leaving Heavy up for what? 45 seconds by now? Just to do the damage? And that just shows what a top level competitor Dewey can be. Because not only does he have the skill to play it passive, but he can also just pull out the aggro. And there we go, Dewey. Catches his opponent making a jump onto the Mega, and that will be Nemesis Dewey securing map one. What a close one, Lethal. Yeah, that was ridiculous. 57% rail for Nosfer, 50% for Dewey, considering how many shots they hit 33, 34, actually five throughout that whole course of the map. But even though Dewey had a lot more item control, and you saw from there at the end, there was only so much. Nosfer could have done even after he's rocketed down there on the arc you can see from there that like he's already taken two health orbs the only other thing he could have done is take the light and the one other health orb on the side where the lg is but that would have been way too predictable Nosfer was going to be weak the entire time and yeah Dewey played that really really well just tried to starve him out as much as possible until Nosfer had not really not much room to breathe and didn't really have too much to do afterwards. He couldn't really retaliate in any ways because he had some of the weapons in his arsenal, but didn't have to stack to back it up there. Yeah, I think Nosefa just felt the pressure mount a bit too much, right? He was stuck in that little corner and typically, if you can, what you want to do is just sit on it. You want to get the small armors, get yourself the helps that you can get a hold of and only leave that safe zone when you feel comfortable doing so. But on the other hand, you know, Dewey is just running the map, picking up Heavy, going back for Mega, and he's got that orb. And I think that that orb is just such a mental oppressive factor towards Nosa, because he knows, even though I'm faster normally with my ability, with my double jump, if Dewey comes around the corner right now and just orbs straight into me with a rocket, I'm done for. So he was under so much pressure to get his stack higher and to make a move. And so when he finally did leave that safety of Banana, that safety of the LG room to make a move onto Mega, Dewey was right there waiting for him and shut that down quickly. So a very tense close game as we would have expected from Dewey, I think, as he secures himself map one. Well, that's the thing with the orb. It either takes a large chunk of damage or gets you out of a hairy situation there, as it did for Dewey quite a lot throughout the course of that map. But Dewey, he, he's a man who lives to live life on the edge, doesn't he? You know, he loves to win a lot of his maps by one frag, two frags, have his low frag games. You know, it gives me a cardiac arrest sometimes, just thinking of like all the <laughs> engagement he takes and literally takes it all the way to the time limit or sudden death just to try and get his way and play his style. But do you know what? If it works, it works. It's just one of those things. And even 
Nosfer actually had to change the way he played and wait for Nos, uh, sorry, do it on a few engagements where where he could be and where Dewey could attack from. And it's a bit of a pain because Dewey is very good at forcing his style on other players, which they're not really comfortable sitting on. I think that when we move into map two, which is of course blood run heavy versus heavy, this should be a brawl like none other. It is going to be important to see who can establish a lead first, because if Dewey can easily or quickly rather get himself a few frags to kick things off with, it is going to be so difficult for No Stop to maneuver back into this, because Dewey will just be playing around the choke points and always have those grenades at the ready to do so much damage anytime his opponent tries to push in to do damage to him and perhaps turn it into a frag. So I think that Nosfar right now, at the start of the game, at least has to be careful not to be too aggressive. He can't allow Dewey to run away with this one from the start by giving up any silly frags. Well, I'm going to say this now, Flea. Dewey is probably one of the last people you want to give an early lead to, or just a lead in general, especially on this map. But the rails he's hitting, it's been remarkable. Dewey. With those grenades, if anything does happen in a bad state, it can use those defensively in some of those narrow corridors, especially one of the ones he's sitting in currently. Nosfa trying to get his stack back up, almost on the default for now. Dewey playing this very cautiously, just being careful what he wants to do. Two rails, is he going to try and go for the third? He doesn't get the time to go round, decides to prioritise the heavy. And he's going to know... But he's just sitting back and waiting to see which way he's going to go round. But Noss is playing this smart, smart, sorry. He might be waiting for the next light armor. Waiting for the health force, which he picked up earlier on. But he's actually got the back of him here. He's got behind him the LG come through the ball rush to try and get away. Knows his exact location. The rail does miss. Could have been a great way to get the first frag on the ball, considering Dewey's stack. But so far, Noss is playing this right. He's just being extra cautious on what he needs to do. Also, props to Dewey for the fake rocket jump right there. Pretending to go for the rocket jump at the bounce pad, trying to throw off his opponent and then just going right back around, making a quick 180 to go straight for the item. Hoping to that allow him to give the opportunity to get that first frag. Didn't quite pan out that way, but uh, Dewey's already being pretty inventive with some of the plays we're seeing. As you said, though, Nosfa, so content just sitting in that top room. He's waiting for the next small armor to spawn. Should be up relatively soon. Has to be careful though. Every single time Dewey peeks around that corner, he lands the shot. And this time it's no different. Good shoddy there though. That was a good play from Nosa. Expecting Dewey to peek again and then just going with the shoddy again once, twice, but out comes the rail. And Dewey will finally secure himself frag number one after two and a half minutes of play. Took a little bit of time, but he got there in the end, and it's not Nosfer wanted at all. He's pineappled up and ready to go if he puts himself in a bad situation. But Dewey has been playing this very smart, but very methodical, and he's been playing it really well and down to a T. He's got a feeling if he could be top mid. Great game sense there. The rocket and the rail comes through. 158 damage done. That beautiful stuff there from Dewey. And the hunt could be on here, but at the same time, he's just questioning whether Nosfa could still be there or if he can try and throw him off. But he knows, well, sorry, now knows that he's not in the nail room waiting for the audio cues. He's actually below just seeing what he could be doing. But again, look at Dewey's stack. It's ridiculous at this moment. And Nosfa now, all he wants to do, at least for the foreseeable future, is just get himself some of these small armors. Get yourself back up to that base stack, that 125 normal limit that you can get up to. But still, he has to be so careful. At least he has all of the weapons this time around. And he even manages to sneak away with a Mega. Perfect play from Nosfa. Really good positioning, knowing that if no matter what side Dewey comes from, he has an escape route right there, especially with the bull rush. And it gave him a mega to work with too. Now things, the dynamic here has changed quite significantly, but ouch. Nosfa, I hope he doesn't let this tilt him because it feels like every single time he gets into a good position, something like this happens. <laughs> every time he gets into a more comfortable spot, Dewey is there with a good rocket, a good rail, anything along those lines. And so Nosfa has to work so hard to get himself in a fighting shape. Absolutely disgusting what Dewey's doing right this moment in time. He's done a lot of damage, hasn't really got much to show for it. 
But the main thing is, even though the damage done isn't a huge amount, it's more showing the dominance and the map presence here and the control he's got. These rails, he's just hitting every single one of them. And I think I've just jinxed him now as he missed that last one. He's just double checking to see if he is top mid, which he is. Gets the light, gets the mega. Back to a nice juicy stack like he was before. And I like what he's doing though. I think with Nosfer, like, he's avoiding the nail room quite a lot. He probably knows that Dewey tends to check there very often. It's like more of a common thing. He checks and one of the first things most players normally check. But Nosfer is being quite unpredictable in terms of where he goes on the back foot. This has been an extremely railgun heavy map for both of these players. Like 80% of their damage on both of their sides has been the railgun alone so far. Love knows for just charging at Dewey and then just the instant 180 to escape. Bit of a fake writer being as intimidating as possible and then just going right back around to make his way out of the room. Here we go. These are the shots that Nosefan needs to start hitting. So often, even when he lands damage, Dewey is there to retaliate and immediately respond in turn. Nosefan needs that unreturned damage like he just did. Yes, he took a tiny bit of tribal damage, but that's all right. That's negligible. As long as he can be the one to land the rails, he's going to maintain control, which he at long last around control. But here we go once again. As I already said, Dewey, so oppressive. Every time the Nosefan feels like he's getting into good shape, Dewey lands one of those rockets and rails. So it's important that the Brazilian keeps in control. He needs to push this. He cannot let Zippon get away right now. Maybe he doesn't know just how low Dewey is. He probably didn't, but that was... That was his shot right there. Ooh. Lethal. That was the opportunity. That would have been a tight game no matter what. He just looked too much into it. He thought Dewey's probably rotated by now or something like that. That was just such a clear bounce he should have took. Sadly, it wasn't to be. He made the assumption. He just gave Dewey a lot of respect. He just made the assumption that he's probably gone round and flanked round to the other side, to the hourglasses and maybe to the telly side. But it wasn't to be. Dewey was actually just sitting in the same place the entire time. Maybe if he fired a few more predictive rockets, could have got the damage done. But Nosfer is still very heavily stacked, which is the main thing. So there's a lot of engagements he can take. But look at this, though. The rocket jump comes in and he pushes straight through. But Dewey... Is backed away for now, but is he going to be expecting this? He comes in. Surely this is Nosfer's chance to try and equalize things, and it does. The rail to finish off Dewey, and finally, five minutes later here, Flea he manages to tie things up, oh. but instead Dewey manages to take the lead. Nosfer, I feel sorry for you, man. You had all that time taken to try and equalize, but it just wasn't to be as Dewey now edges by one frag again. Oh, it took him five minutes for one kill. And then just 10 seconds afterwards, Dewey is like, okay, I'll put myself back into the lead. I don't need more than one frag of a lead. Still, though, there's two minutes left. Plenty of time for Nosa. He can repeat what he did earlier. Highly aggressive. Good rocket to start things off with. Doesn't want to let Spawn get away again. And this time, he does push the advantage. Two to two. All tied up. Nosa. Definitely capable of taking this map still. Nosfer back to his default stack. He knows he hasn't got a massive advantage just before, but he definitely does after being on on that bounce pan. The bull rush comes in nicely cleaned up from Nosfer. And that was perfect for him with the LG ha having hand in hand in the end as he was up the bounce pad and then the bull rush. You couldn't really have asked for more. That was pretty much a gift given to Nosfer there. But remember, Dewey does have a much bigger stack. He has picked up the Mega. He's got a minute and 25 left to try and tie things up once again and take it to Southern Death if he can. But the way Noss is playing right now, I'm not sure, but we'll have to see. And this is, of course, the drawback of that Dewey playstyle, right? Yes, winning with one frag is entirely possible. But if you have a one frag lead and you continuously just allowing your opponent to stay alive while you rotate the items, even if you do a lot of damage, even if you stay in full control that entire time without adding more frags to your lead, Things can turn south so quickly. Right now, Nosfa running will be able to still get away by using the bull rush. 45 seconds left to go. Dewey, does he know where his opponent is? Probably hurt the hum, but he hurts it too late. 
no spawn. Absolutely taking no chances right there. He could have stuck around and 99% of the time he would have killed Dewey in that engagement, but he doesn't want to take the risk knowing that he is in such a perfect position to tie up the map score. No far right now, just playing a passive game. Doesn't even want to go for the major items anymore. Earlier, that was a beautiful LG from Nosfer, basically catching Dewey with his trousers down. Might be doing it again as the rocket comes through. We'll be ball rushing away, and he's only got 10 seconds left. Dewey needs to push him now, no matter how big the risk. The LG comes in, though. He will teleport through. Surely this is Nosfer's map to win. And it is, as Nosfer manages to take that 3-2. to two. And it was a little bit of a worry at first, but at least Nosfer gets that map on the board. He played it perfectly, Harry. That's just what he did. We discussed it numerous times throughout the map itself. Nosfer just didn't allow himself to get flustered, didn't feel the pressure one bit. He just stuck to his guns and did what worked. Stay, play it passive, play it defensive. Don't try to run out across the map trying to steal away a mage right and do quickly. Don't try to get every single weapon in the lineup. No. Hold your ground, plant your feet firmly, and just say, I'm going to wait until I get my base stack, and then I will find the right opportunity. And that was when he stole away that one mega, somehow around, I think it was five minutes into the game, steals away one mega, and that just allows him to convert into a consistent degree of control. So perfect play from Nosfa, showing that he isn't just the aggressive router that some people make him out to be, but he can clearly be a very tactical and disciplined player too. He seems to be a lot better as a tactical player, but then again, at the same time, you know, he was the one who was in the lead. So, you know, he can yeah. be the one to force the engagement. He can one can choose when and when the opportunity arises. He can take the lead and then maybe increase the lead afterwards. It's quite funny though, there's like a minute and 30, about a minute left, and Nosso was just like, well, do you know what, dude? You've been playing your game for the last two maps. I'm just going to chill back, do my game, and then I'm going to play exactly your style and just get a bit of a taste of your own medicine there. Dewey came close in a few opportunities there, but I just felt like Nosfer was just given too much item control. Yeah, I, I said the same thing earlier, right? That's the downside of Dewey's playstyle. If you are content with winning by just one frag, it can work, but it's risky. And that is exactly what happened this time around. You saw that Dewey had quite a few opportunities to make more of the situation that he did in the end, but he always decided to, you know what? I have the stack lead, I have the frag lead, I'm just gonna turn around and pick up Mega. I'm gonna deny Mega, I'm gonna deny Heavy. As long as you don't get it, everything is fine by me. But of course, the longer you keep doing that and the more of an opportunity you give your opponent to just stack up on the small items, he might just be fixing a comeback over time. And that is exactly what came to be. We'll be heading into our third map very shortly between both of these players. It's been an interesting day so far. We've only into like our third match in every single series we've had. It's gone one all, and then it's finding out the final map to see who actually takes the series win. Every single match has been close so far, which is really great. Yeah. And this map, sorry, especially, is going to be so, so important for both of these players to try and reach up in the rankings, of course, not just in the standings, but on the uh, America's side of things too. As Nosfer has been playing pretty well, Dude's been a little bit on form here and there. But this is what I like about it, two completely different clash of styles. It's like if you had the EU region, for example, you want to see a clash of styles, you normally think of maybe Kilsen versus base because their styles are just completely opposite. And yeah. then again, for the Americas, this is probably, again, the best example, you know, Nosfer versus Dewey, you know, the yeah. very aggressive Latam powerhouse versus Dewey, where, you know, he decides to choose where and when he has the engagement and probably one of the most disciplined players we have so for this third map we should be in for a real treat here but i'm a little bit worried for nosfer because i know how good dewey can be in terms of on blood covenant but at the same time he does choose what fights he wants to take very wisely yeah and as we are jumping into the third and final map of the series i just want to remind everyone please if you're enjoying the show don't forget hashtag quake pro league advertise spread the word shout it out get your mom on the phone and help her join in on the fun in chat Guys, this is the Quake Pro League. You do not want to miss the games that we have got coming up. But for the time being, we are going to watch and see the decider of Dewey versus No Side will be Blood Covenant. Again, an interesting matchup to be sure. Yeah, make sure you let everyone at home know and tell everyone about this because we've not even got to the best of our matches yet. This is still match three of seven in the Quake Pro League. And I'm sure so far this map is going to be a bit of a doozy here, slobber knocker, you could say, Flea, going into this. And we'll have to see if Nosfer can clean up and try and take this series win, or if Dewey can choose the opportunities he so desperately wants and desires. 
and takes this series himself. It's going to be a close one, depending on who gets this first frag, as already Dewey gets a nice chunk of damage done of his own. Nosfer's trying to back away for the time being. But Nosfer got another lovely rail. Still one more. It's going straight in for it. LG come through and Nosfer managed to get that nicely. So already Nosfer with the lead. That was a good play from Nosfer, knowing exactly that he had the weapon advantage at that distance and that the rockets just weren't quite cutting it for Dewey. Playing the distance game, perfect positioning right there with the LG allows him for a quick first frag, immediately converting it into yet another one, a 2-0 lead already. And now Dewey does manage to get a hold of the railgun. This is bad for Nosfa. Nosa expected Dewey to drop down. He was so convinced that his opponent would have fallen down below that he already had the railgun out trying to punish the getaway. But Dewey was just still up there, ready with the rocket at hand. And when you're up against a close quarters opponent, railgun is the last weapon you want to be caught out with. I just can't believe he missed that rail. I don't know if that went just on the side of him or through his legs. It was way too quick for me to see after I've looked at that in slow motion. But that was ridiculous how he just barely missed that shot off. Could have definitely changed the tides, but both players now playing it nice and slow. Dewey gives up the top rocket, top bridge control, decides to get the light. The Mega is coming up in the next seven seconds, but then again, Heavy is very slowly but surely coming up shortly behind. As Dewey now knows exactly where Nosfer is, is waiting for the opportunity to try and get some kind of advantage here. But Nosfer is going to know exactly where he is. Beautiful rocket there, hitting 77 for him. But then again, Nosfer with the rail. This is the problem Dewey's been having quite a lot. He managed to get the managed to get the engagement he wants and sneaks up on him perfectly. But Nosfer with his rails, you just can't beat it. It's an absolute menace and to society and an absolute aim star. As now I mean, Dewey's going to have to try and chill out for the time being and restack. Nosfa has 75% rail right now, Harry. 75. That is <laughs> a sickeningly high railgun accuracy already. And it's doing so much damage to Dewey, stopping him from being able to easily make his way onto any item. Nosfa takes a bad one in return, though. Dewey, he senses this is an opportunity. He smells blood. Heavy is still up. And Nosefa actually deciding not even to go for it. I think Nosefa just figured that after taking that bad rail in the back, he was too weak to confidently go for the item as well. And that he, if he went for it and Dewey hit another rail, he wouldn't even be able to rocket jump out because he had so little health that he would kill himself doing so. So instead, he made the more passive tactical choice to just evacuate, get out of the area. He'll find another day. Best to hang on to that one frag lead still. He certainly will, as Nosfer's playing at Dewey's game at this moment in time. Dewey has been keeping the item control for the last minute and a half, but the rails from Nosfer has just been ridiculous. He's been hitting almost all of them here. Another one goes by. I don't think he's going to... Oh, that was another piece of rail. I didn't even expect him to even drop down from there. I thought he was literally going to flank round and try oh. and rotate round, but the tunnel caller comes out. Dewey manages to Hang clean on. up with the MG. <laughs> Oh, that Flea, was, help me. That, <laughs> that was a double gauntlet, Lethal. The it double was. gauntlet, mythical. Two gauntlets coming out at once. That is no doubt going to be a highlight for this week. So rare to see. As Dewey starting to make a comeback happen. Just one frag behind. That was a lot of good rocket damage right there. Nose for struggling, caught in a bad spot. Dewey, can he close it out right here? Actually sticking around, then he lands the shot, the bait, waiting around, and Nosefa fell for it, expecting his opponent to already have left. But he was still just sitting and waiting for the best angle to make a shot. This is what I mean about predictability here. Like, he's definitely worked on it, and he's been a lot more unorthodox compared to before, but he's let himself go just a little bit here. But Nosefa... His stack is looking dreadful. He needs to try and heal up as much as he can. And on the other side of the spectrum, you can see Dewey already just leaving the heavy for now, just delaying it as much as he can. Both Mega and Heavy have been up for a while now. And he decides to go for it for the time being. The Mega is still up, still on rotation. Nosfer decides not to go for it. I think he just assumes that it's already been taken as the Mega's been up for at least 15, 20 seconds. But this is great for Dewey if he picks it up, because at least that way... We'll have the timing for it, but it doesn't matter as Nosfer has taken it for himself. Still a tied game here. Second half 
off the map. I thought that was going to be a possibility of another engagement, but Dewey's decided to wait for his time to shine. The first rail misses, and it's decided to back away once again here, Flea. Dewey has done an impressive job getting the game tied back up again, because he's playing against one of the absolute fastest champions in the game while running a medium-sized champ himself that doesn't have a single movement ability. BJ has got nothing going for him in terms of movement. He's just relatively slow overall. And to catch up a Slash, if you're up against a good Slash who just runs and runs and runs, it can be barely impossible to even catch a glimpse of her. So Dewey played that extremely well, not just relying on speed, but doing some really clever tactical plays to catch and trap his opponent, and that allowed him to tie things right back up. Now, Nosefa is the one who is in control of Heavy right now, Dewey is just cycling Mega. Bit of a split of 15 seconds between the items. This means that if either player gets a leg up now in this coming engagement, they might be setting themselves up for full control. Nosfer, if he gets the lead, he knows he's in a fantastic spot, like he said earlier with Slash's agility and the ability to move very quickly. He can literally get away all he likes, but the rails from Dewey are Marco at this point in time takes a little bit of rocket damage here. Goes for the Mega anyway, gets railed through his troubles. It's railed again. Nosfer needs to put that weapon down. He's been an absolute nuisance throughout the whole course of this map, doing so much chip damage and making Dewey feel like any item he picks up, it's just pointless at this moment in time. He's just burning all of these items, but the double heavy machine gun comes through. A little bit of a waste, but you know, he's hoping to force out that engagement, which doesn't happen as he picks up the lights, he's got the rockets, decides to back away for now. Could be here for a long time here, depending on what happens. But you've got to remember, if Nosfer gets the lead, he can always get away with a slash where he sees fit. If Dewey gets the lead, you know what Dewey's like as a player. It can be a real nuisance when he's got the lead backing away all the time. Absolutely, and still around 60% railgun accuracy for Nosa, a bit lower than the 70 he was at earlier, but it is still by far his primary weapon. Dewey much more balanced, actually doing more damage with rockets than with rail, and I think that just really shows the difference in playstyles this map around. Nosa playing the long game, trying to land these long distance rail shots from relative safety, whereas Dewey, of course, using the dual wield, just wants to get up close and personal to use the rockets. And the damage counter reflects that absolutely perfectly. Good read from Dewey, could have gone for the heavy right off the bat, but instead wants to cut off his opponent. Now the item is up, Dewey realizes. It will have gone to his opponent. I like the play from Dewey, but Nosa caught on to it a little too quickly and just looped right back around using that superior slash speed to still secure the item. So that uh, didn't go Dewey's way at all. Dewey looking completely surprised. No idea where the damage is coming from right there. And he's just gonna leave the room. He says, I want nothing to do with this wizardry. Leave me alone. I'm gonna stabilize first. Yep, definitely. I can add on to that as in, yeah, I'm okay, mate. I'm not going to take that engagement because I know you're going to get the better half of me <laughs> straight afterwards, which is completely understandable. As both of you players have a similar stack. A very close game, but Nosfer's rails have just been very good. But even then, do we hit 9 of 17 against a slash? 52% accuracy, very, very good. But Nosfer needs to try and get away with his life if he can, which he has done. And he's just slowly trying to build up his stack once more. But Dewey has controls of the lights. And I think Nosfer may have to force this out into a sudden death because he's nowhere near in a position to fight. But these predicted rockets, the rails he's hitting constantly, he's trying to stop him from getting the heavy. But I think he's going to have to leave him here. It's only on 43 HP, back to 50 now, and leaves it. But the main thing is Dewey managed to get that heavy. That was so, so vital to stop Nos from getting any kind of map control, even though he's had it slightly the last 15 seconds with the height advantage. But Dewey's just laughing here at this point. He's just hurt himself a bit to burn the light armors to make Nos for give him a bit more hard work from reaching his default stack again. Yeah, Nosfa right now has got to push the brakes. He knows. Yes, he's got the speed, but if he uses it too carelessly, he's in big trouble. His opponent has got the better rotation, has got the better stack, and he's going to get caught out coming around the corner looking the wrong way. Is this it? With two seconds left, there is no way for Nosfa to get close again. And Dewey just comfortably waiting around the corner, letting his opponent come to him. And that is going to get him. The ultimate victory, 2-1 to, to Dewey. Well played indeed.
As if that happened, what a way to end things. I was thinking to myself, it's going to be like a good two or three minute sudden death until yep. all said is done. But no, instead, <laughs> very anticlimactic, I think that's the uh, way of putting it. But Dewey, congratulations to him, managed to take that series by one frag once again. And it definitely could have gone either way. I think Nosfer, I do feel sorry for him a bit. Like his rails were just absolutely sublime. But then again, so were Dewey's in some stages. You know, when he was, you got to remember, he finally gets a slash, one of the smallest champions with the smallest hitboxes. It's very, very difficult considering the speed you've got to try and put your cursor on too. It's uh, very hard, but Dewey played that very methodically, but very, very well. Absolutely. We had a slow start and then things just picked up pace, three to three, and then it just stayed at that for just about half the game, really. And finally, in the end, Dewey, just the passive plays, I think that uh, Nosfa just completely wasn't expecting it to be there, was already counting on the fact that Dewey was hopefully going to go for the heavy instead, already set up for the next rotation, but Dewey absolutely not thinking that way and just trying to cut off his opponent, getting an excellent read on Nosefa once again. And we've seen Dewey perform a lot of those really good predictions this series around. So a uh, deserved victory, close game, but it will be Dewey securing the 2-1 victory in the end. The timing of that peak was remarkable. Normally, when you take that route from Mega to Light, normally you expect them to be on the Light Armor, maybe like getting ready to find the first rocket or try and put him off. I don't expect, or I don't think he even expected him to be on the other side. But even in there, that was a great matchup, you know, for the blood run from where Dewey was just able to like try and get away and, you know, try and at least stabilize that lead. But I honestly felt like that was going to be one of those five, 10 minute sudden death games where neither yeah. player will actually try and make that first move. I felt like Nosfer really wanted to. You could tell by the amount of times he got so much chip damage going but every single map was so chaotic and i thought it was going to be a lot more structured considering what both players are like but we know what nosfer's like he always likes to yeah. uh, make a structured game into a very chaotic messy game to say the least yeah, I think that might have played a factor in how that final engagement went down. It's entirely possible that Nosa figured that if this is going to be a long overtime matchup, I don't want to deal with that, especially not against a player like Dewey, because Dewey will literally sit there for 20 minutes. He doesn't care. He is fine. That is his comfort zone, and absolutely not the same can be said for Nosa. So perhaps a bit too aggressive right there, but also I like just the turnaround from Dewey, because those kinds of traps really isn't something he had been doing a lot during that matchup, right? So that was just, maybe if Dewey had been doing that more often, Nosa would have been like, okay, he might be hiding around any single corner, but Dewey didn't play the matchup that way at all. So I think that just added to the surprise, and Nosa completely blindsided by that final little trap. So a well played by Dewey, no dots. I kind of feel like Dewey is underestimated in terms of his aggression. Like every time he does play very aggressively or he likes to do what he wants to do or he's, you know, behind enemy lines and is not looking too good for him. He's actually very, very good. I prefer that style of him more than like what we normally see with the passive discipline stance he likes to take each yeah. and every time he plays against someone. But, you know, it's just one of those things. But, you know, what, what can we say? You know, he took the win anyway, so he managed to win the entire match. But that's all said and done with the third match. And we'll be back very shortly with the fourth one. So stay tuned.